Hello and welcome to the show here on uh, our game. Myself, Shane Stapleton. We're going to be joined by Michael Verney as ever. We've also got uh, former Kilkenny hurler and current Camogie boss Brian Dowling on the show and also former Galway manager Kevin Walsh, an iconic player as well, it must be mentioned. I'll just first of all bring in Michael Verney. Michael, how are things with you? All good, Shane. Yeah, all good, yeah. Oh. I'm throwing everything around the place there. And as well, Brian, delighted to have you on the show. Obviously, very tough circumstances for the family um, in, the, in the past uh, number of days. And I suppose I'll just go through it. Obviously, you've, ha you've had tragedy and your brother, mm -hmm. Sean, put up a, a GoFundMe page on the basis of what's happened here. And I'll just read out the, the statement on that. And hopefully people can, can follow the GoFundMe page, which I'll share a link to and uh, support that. But I... Uh, Sean's message said Wednesday the 23rd of March started as any normal day in the lives of two elderly brothers Dominic and Oliver Brennan in Jenkinstown in Kilkenny by lunchtime their lives were altered forever a fire broke out in their uh, in their home house taking the house all its contents and with deep regret I write the life of Oliver who couldn't escape the, the flames Dominic now stricken with grief homeless and with nothing but the dog that also escaped has now left to rebuild his life from scratch and as a family and community we've organized this fundraiser with the hope that we can lighten the financial load for Dominic and show our solidarity and support as Dominic and Oliver's family we want to express our deep gratitude for any support you can give we appreciate that right now everyone is under enormous enormous financial stress and there are so many worthy causes to donate to any donation no matter how small is greatly appreciated it's obviously been a tough time Brian but the the response seems to have been brilliant so far uh, I'm sure that's given you some so small crumbs of comfort yeah look thanks for having me first of all lads um Look, yeah, sure. I suppose it was it's a, just over a week now since it happened. It was a terrible shock to everybody in our family and in the community. And, you know, I think it's, it's after kind of hitting everybody all over the place. Um, look, when anything like that happens, it's, it's just a terrible tragedy. But I suppose you, we all say, look, you never expect it to happen at your own doorstep. So, look, it was a um, terrible incident last Wednesday. And unfortunately, my uncle Oliver lost his life. Um, my uncle Dom was lucky that he survived. Um, but obviously, his home house was left astride. So... Um, that's my own mother's uh, house from when she grew up as well. So, look, it's the only place he's ever lived, and all he wants to do is to move back there. And look, my brother set up the GoFundMe page on, on Monday, I think it was, and the response to it since then has just been absolutely incredible. Um, people from all over the place have donated money, have shared stuff on, on social media. It's, it's, it's just really remarkable what people have done, and I think it's, it's over 32,000 now. Um, I think the target was 20,000, but even at that, well, at the start, I don't think that was a realistic target. I think we just throwing up there to hopefully get anywhere near it. it would have been you know, 5,000, I think we kind of said maybe. But to get 32,000 is, is just unbelievable and it seems to be rising there the whole time. So, look, people are are just brilliant, you know, and, and we really appreciate everything that they've done for us. Yeah, and there is the, the fundraiser page just there. Michael, do you want to do you want to say anything? No, just uh, the only thing I will say is in times of uh, in times of hardship and tragedy, the GA community, there is no better community to come together and pull together for one another. So uh, great to see people giving their support through what is, I, I can't imagine how, how difficult a time it is for, for Brian and his family. So uh, this, 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 it doesn't, uh, it doesn't replace anything, but it definitely does help anyway. So I just encourage people to, to get involved and give any support and no matter how small, every little does help. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, just, uh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah. No, sorry, just to echo that. Like, you know, I think, you know, we, I suppose sport, we all are mad at sport and that. And it is times like this, as Michael said, that you really see the, the huge benefits of it. Um, you know, obviously in Kenny Camogie at the moment, you know, we've had another tragedy only recently with Paul Shefflin passing suddenly at 41 years of age and his brother Tommy is part of our coach and staff. So, you know, and we've just seen the, you know, the, the, the trauma and the, the devastation that that left in, in Ballyhale and that. And, you know, but it's, it's you know, I was only talking to Tommy about recently. It's just the, having sport outside of that just gives you something to release. And, um, you know, the response from the, the GEA circles and the Camogie circles in the last week has been unbelievable. You know, just seeing people donating and tweeting stuff, you know, Car Camogie, Dublin Camogie, Clare, um, you know, all of them have been absolutely unreal, you know, and Kenny Camogie, Kenny Harlan, it's just, it's unreal, you know, obviously we have rivalries with players and stuff like that, but, you know, I got messages from from Cork Mogi players, from from managers um, in the game, and you know, obviously when we're the white line, or get over the white line, it's a different ball game. But after sixty minutes, there's a huge respect there, and um, you know, I'm just very grateful to to everybody, and it just means a huge amount to, to myself and to obviously to my family as well. And you know, my I talked to my uncle Dom last night, and you know, I was telling him all the the, the stars that have been tweeting them and or have been retweeting stuff like Joe Canning and Eddie Brennan and all these lads. Um, 
uh, Marty Morrissey, Anthony Daly. So I think he's he, he can't get over that. You know, he's not into social media and like that himself. But it's you know it is it, obviously it's still extremely tough and it's I mean, it's raw at the moment. But uh, it is giving him a lift that you know and the family lift to, to know that there's a huge support there in in Kilkenny and and all over the country as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's something I found out when we had the fundraiser for my sister back in late 2018. I mean, just the local area, unbelievable, but also beyond that as well. Obviously, there was the, the great match between yeah. the Tipperary and the Kilkenny legends. So, I mean, no better place than the GA to support its people. So I really hope that people can continue to contribute to that fundraiser. And um, look, hopefully there's, you know, really tough time for your family, Brian. So, um, yeah, just hard to know what to even say beyond that. But yeah. um yeah, so I mean, I, I, it feels a little bit trite to talk about sport, but I suppose it, great to have you on because as myself and Michael were saying to each other beforehand, there's so many different things we could potentially ask you about. Now, I know that you're, you're obviously over the Kilkenny Camogie team and you have the All Ireland success behind you, but uh, so which would distract you from, I suppose, seeing some of the men's game at times. But um, first thing I do want to ask you about is the new coverage deal that will see the Camogie Association with a minimum of nine games shown live on RTE television each year. So you've been involved a few, uh, for a number of years now, first off with Anne Downey and now on your own as well. And, you know, obviously you have a long history in Harlan. Do you, where do you think Camogie is going in terms of like progress and getting status? It's it's getting better, that's for sure. Um, I've seen a huge improvement even since I've been there. You know, obviously we had no sponsor last year, which was very disappointing, but you know, the sponsorship announcement on Monday, I think it was, um, you know, it was brilliant to see. And look, that's what we want. And you see there's other counties now, um, Cork, we're after getting no one sponsorship, Galway, big sponsorship deal. Um, you know, we're very well looked after in Kenny with with Columbia as well. So look, it's it's great to see and you know, the, the live games is brilliant. Um Little ones have done great work in the, the leagues the last couple of years, streaming the games and stuff like that. So I think the All Ireland that we won in 2020, um, it was you know it was on at half seven on a Saturday night, and you know I think it got a big audience. I know it was during COVID, I suppose people weren't doing much else, but I think it was good promotion of the game, and it's just to get the, get people watching it. You know that's that's the main thing. Um, you know the attendance is just, it would still be fairly low at games um, until you get to an All Ireland final, but you know it is increasing, it is getting better, and it just you have to keep promoting the game. You know. Yeah, Michael. Just on that, Brian, how important do you think the rule changes have been over the last couple of years? I find I find Camogie is so easy to look at now, maybe as opposed to maybe a couple of years ago. Now, just the the bit of physical contact, the fact that you know, you know, fr frees are not given nearly as easily as they would have been before. I do think it's a much better spectacle. There's been some like the All Ireland final last year was brilliant. Year semi final was brilliant. The twenty twenty was it twenty twenty two or twenty twenty All Ireland final was very very good as well. They're helping themselves, I suppose, now after maybe not helping themselves for a while. Yeah, definitely. I, I love the rule change. I, I think they can, another few tweaks here would be great as well. Um, like you know, all the girls want, all the managers want is physicality. You know, I was watching on, like you probably were in 17 and 18, 16, the, the three Kilkenny and Cork finals, and it was just every 20 seconds was a free and you no know, very low scoring games. And, you know, there's no flow to it. It was really, really frustrating. Um, some of the league games still are frustrating. Just the refs. Are not really letting the games flow like you know but they kind of seem to do in the in the later stages you know definitely the last two all ireland finals were brilliant games uh physical physical last three all ireland finals the physicality in the games were brilliant and that's what the players want and that's what supporters want you know if you want to get supporters into the ground you have to let the games flow like within reason obviously you know there is a, a one or two more rules that could change you know still have the, the play in the hurl and things like that that probably should be gone um but look there, there are dropping the hurl is gone uh, hand passing the ball into the goal is gone, you know, and look, the girls are delighted with that. Like, there's nobody complaining that they want these rules back. So, um, look, there's little, one or two more things that could be changed, but it's definitely going in the right direction, which is great. Mm, yeah. Um, we wanted to ask you about uh, your old Lachlan Gales teammates, uh, Mikey Butler, Hugh Lawler, Paddy Deegan. Obviously, Deegan and, and Lawler are there a while. They're well established at this stage. Mikey Butler's had a good league so far this year. Like, they, they really are kind of stepping up, and Butler has come over. Come, overcome some serious injury difficulties to get to this stage yeah look i was lucky enough to coach mikey in our Auckland's under 16 for two years and, and minor as well uh, look he's an absolutely brilliant chap um he's not a chap anymore so well but uh he's, he's after having some league um you know ever since i had him you know he's a lad i, I would have thought would have made it but he was always very very small 
Um, but by God, he's as tough as nails. Um, you get nothing easy off that lad. Um, he's after really put a lot, a lot of work into into gym work in the last couple of years. That's very obvious to see. Um, yeah, he did a cruise ship there two years ago, and then the, a lot comes to beat my Dixburg in the county semi final, and then he made it back uh, just in, at the start of the summer there last year. So. Um, look, he's after marking all the big guns there. You know, anyone that keeps Desi Hutchins two points, I think, is in is his shows how good they are. Um, you know, you do not get an easy game off Mikey. He's he's right behind you everywhere you go, and uh, just has a super attitude. So I'm delighted to see him going so well. And look, you and Paddy, I suppose, broke into the team. Paddy Deegan will be a player I'd use as an example um, to anyone I'm talking to as a player who's got the absolute maximum of his career. Um, like Paddy would have hurled with a locker room, saying the 14, 16 minor, and won absolutely nothing with his team age group, you know. And you know, nobody in a locker room would have said um, that Paddy would have went on to hurl senior for Kilkenny. We always thought, look, he'd be a good club hurler, and that'd be it. But by God, what he's after doing for Kilkenny is unreal, and he's now one of the most important players. Um, he's just brilliant, like, and he's a brilliant leader in the club as well. He's just Paddy just loves hurling, like, you know, he just he had the hurling ball in his hand the whole time, he just he just loves it. Um, and I suppose the other Hugh Lawler then is I think I'd say he's nearly one of the best fullbacks in the country now. And again, Hugh was always brilliant. He was it's hard to believe, but Hugh was absolutely tiny when he was under 14. And he just really after growing now, he's one of the biggest lads in the game. But um look, he's having a super year and it's great to see three of his lads in the backs at the moment anyway. So please God let it continue. Yeah. Michael, didn't you want to ask him uh, ask Brian about his brother Sean's hurling style? Yeah, Brian, it's always something I wondered. He was always referred to as an omelette curler. Can you explain can you explain that? I know it's probably not that easy to explain, but can you explain it to us? Oh, you're just awkward, I suppose. Um <laughs> years, you know, Sean, it's funny enough, didn't he didn't hurl until he was um about ten or twelve years of age. Um whereas I would have been out hurling in O'Loughlin's when I was five. So Sean was nearly 10 or 11 when he went into O'Loughlin. So he would have been playing as a forward and he was just thrown in full forward basically and lobbed the ball into me and tried to win the ball but he didn't have much hurling and he just developed as what he was I think it was in, in Kieran's that he was moved back into the backs at, at under 16 level at the start of the year and he ended up getting player of the year and he ended up getting player of the year in, in Kieran's on the senior team as well in his last year and he just kind of went from there um you know he had a very good hand on him in the air and stuff like that so um you know he's definitely awkward looking at him that's what I'd be telling him can you explain to me the, the, the what an omlock is exactly is it what is it? Is it right hand on top and that he switches hands or what exactly? Because I've never heard anybody else really refer to as an Amlock curler. He said, yeah. and I, I typed it into Google and his name came up on Wikipedia. So <laughs> I think I said the first I ever heard of that was um I think it was 2003 All Ireland final and he was going to take a sideline cut and Jerry Canning was the one who said it. He was Sean down as an Amlock curler. So I'd never heard of it before that either. I presume it's it's switching to her. I think likes of um. I suppose there's a few Kilkenny lads that do it. Um, Taggy Fogarty and, and Wally Welsh now as well. Um, you know, the, the left hand goes on top. I suppose when you're younger now, you're trying to, club coaches are trying to change that. Um, but look, it doesn't do some lads to harm. I, I still think the lads who do that probably struggle to strike on the left hand side. I'd be always slagging Sean that he can't hit the ball more than 10 yards on his left hand side. So um, I think it does affect you there. But look, it, it doesn't look pretty at times, but in some ways as well, it can be hard to stop because it's unpredictable. You don't really know which hand he's going to throw up at times. So, you know, it does work in their favour sometimes as well. Can you just talk to me, Brian? Um, you obviously played with, with Sean back back then. I think, it's, as Shane said, it's 20 years ago since he scored that winning point in the league final. And the, the symmetry of it all, the fact that there was a GPA row going on at the time and there's a GPA row still going on now 20 years later, I thought was an interesting one. But can you just talk me back to your, your time with Kilkenny? How many years were you were you involved? And what was it like it was to be involved with you know, in around you know then and the years following, probably the greatest squad that was ever assembled in Harlan? Yeah, look, I was there. I was only there for two years. Um, I retired then, went out in a high. Um, no, look, unfortunately, yeah, two years. But I would have liked to have lot, had a lot longer. Um, I was called in when I was just out of minor, so I was only eighteen when I was on the panel, and you know I was getting on really well and I was getting a bit of a bit of game time here and there. Um, and then obviously I came on in the, the league final and got two points. Sean got a point that day as well. Came on in the Leinster semi finals softly and came on the Leinster finals next and got a point. Didn't feature then for the rest of the year. Then the following year, um, we got a couple of league games as well. And, you know, I, I felt I was hitting form with the club just after the league. And then I broke my ankle at the start of the summer and I was still under 21. And I got back within six or seven weeks, probably way too soon. And I tried to force it and I really struggled for, for confidence that year. Ended up um, getting back on the under 21 team. We won the All-Ireland against Galway, but I ended up 
was taken off in 15, 20 minutes to go in that All-Ireland final, really dense me confidence. And then went on, we won the county final with O'Loughlin's and, you know, it was only going okay, but I think I felt it was really coming back to form in the All-Ireland semi-final against Newtown Chandler when I went to a replay and, you know, I felt it was going well. Um, that was on a Saturday and I got a phone call off Brian Cody then, the dreaded phone call on the Monday morning to say my services were no longer required and I think it was about a 45 second chat and that was it. Um, he said, look, I'll be giving nine yeah, if you're doing well, we'll bring you back in. And I was still under 21 for that year, but, um, you know, I just, I didn't enjoy Ireland at all. I was putting so much pressure on myself because all I wanted to do was, was get back on the panel and look, back then there was no psychologists or anything like that. I, I afterwards I would have, um, built up a brilliant relationship with the late brother, uh, Damien Brennan, but unfortunately at the time that I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't know him at the time well enough to talk to him. So look, I really could have benefited from talking to someone back then. And look, I suppose all my life, all I wanted to do was hard for the game. That was my dream. And, you know, to be in there at 18 and gone at 20 was, was devastating. And, you know, probably, you know, probably definitely affected me for the rest of my career. And it was something I, I found hard to get over because confidence wise and then, you know, trying to, well, I tried so hard to get back there and the harder I was trying, the worse it was getting, you know. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, we're switching over to Patreon for the rest of the show. Patreon.com forward slash our game. That's the place you can watch the rest of the show. It's just a five or a month. Works out very little per podcast, about 50 cents. 